quickly get used to what I need to do and jump down the hole before that guy attacks me. Now, I do not know what to do with this boss. Because when I did the original recording oh so many days ago, I apologize for making so long to do a recording. I had a bit of a medical emergency. Nothing wrong with me, it was more a uh, family thing, but oh well. So I do apologize for taking so long, but I don't know how to defeat this boss, I'm assuming. For some reason I attacked the upper mannequin. Don't know why. I'm also under the assumption that this is a mini boss and not a real boss. I am fully expecting a real boss to show up soon. Which probably means I shall up um heal myself. There. Okay, maybe there isn't a uh, boss yet. Maybe there's a dungeon leading up to it. Do I fall down this hole? No. Where do I go? I don't know. But yeah, due to the emergency, I didn't work. I feel like I should say I didn't work yesterday because I'm working tonight, but realistically, I'm working tomorrow because I start at midnight, so the more accurate thing will be I didn't work today. But it feels like I didn't work yesterday. Joys of work in the midnight shift. You're adorable children. You're a... Oh. Um... I did not mean... Mean to do that. Um, okay, at least I have an idea what to do, we're playing Simon Says. Um... Stop. Okay. And I'm assuming you're going to say stop now. Are you the boss? For some reason, I was expecting to talk to her. Or it. I don't know. Okay, I guess those spikes don't hurt me. Um, I'm assuming you're the boss. How do I attack you, boss lady? Seriously, how do I attack you?
I don't know. I've got some sneaky suspicion this boss is going to be a lot of trouble. And I don't know if it was 11s or whatever. Yeah, they're a curve because when I get down, they show up as a light. Okay. So maybe this boss isn't as um, difficult as I anticipated, so I did just lose a lot of health, so. There you go. I don't know. Is this the Queen of Spain? The one whose children died because of Christopher Columbus. Or not because of Christopher Columbus, but um died on the journey to Christopher Columbus the journey to Christopher Columbus. And large bulb. Oh, it's going to say heavy bulb, not large, but well, you understand what I mean. At least I hope you understand what I mean. War of Attrition, I guess. A War of Attrition with Digest 1. Bloody Mary! A drink I've never had. A drink I have no interest in having because there's something about drinking tomato juice that just... Like, I know the tomato is a fruit, but it's a savory fruit, not a sweet fruit, so drinking it doesn't feel right to me. Anyhow, so I did see the, um, actually, you know what, considering that goes there, I'll speak to this guy first. Why do I have the feeling this is Columbus? Why do I have the feeling that Queen put Columbus in a shell because her children or her... Was it three sons or four sons? I know there was three numbers, that, but that was a date, not the, no the number I didn't have anything to do with C. Sons, except for the fact that that's the date they possibly died or disappeared or what have you. Anyways, I was honestly expecting this video to be a bit of a failure. I mean, I was anticipating a boss, but for some reason I was expecting the boss to be a lot more difficult. For some reason, and I feel like I'm going to be jinxing myself here, but the bosses in this game seem a lot more simple is somewhat of a misleading word. Manageable. The bosses in Terra Enigma 
seen a lot more August there. August there just did it. The bosses in this game seem a lot more manageable than in Soul Blazer and Terranigma. Which makes, I guess it makes a little sense due to it being the final game in the trilogy and I guess they wanted to not necessarily makes the game a lot more simple but maybe makes the boss fights a lot more simple. But it also makes more sense that they will make the boss fights a lot more difficult. Because it's the last game in the trilogy, and so they want to, you know, up the difficulty factor, up the challenge factor. So I kind of understand the logic going both ways. But I anticipated the logic going the more bosses being difficult route. Simply because that's what I... Okay, three princes. But it's simply because that's what I sort of anticipate in sequels or follow-up games. I mean, the game's not really a sequel per se. I mean, it's part of the Quintouch trilogy, but the games don't really have... from what I can tell, that much in common other than sort of gameplay factor and the fact that they're developed by Quintet, published by Enix. I know they were published by Enix. I think it was Quintet who created them. I mean, again, I didn't grow up with these games. I didn't own a Super Nintendo as a child. I owned a Genesis. And even if I did own a Super Nintendo as a child, chances are... Well, this game I never would have gotten anyways because I live in uh, North America, specifically Canada, and the game was never released over here. But Soul Blazer and Illusion of Gaia... Um, I don't know, maybe I would have rented them, and uh, maybe I would have had an interest in that, but just due to my sort of tastes in video games at, at that time in my life, um, with the exception of Western role-playing games, which were more... Not even PC, they were sort of home computer. PC before PC was a sort of thing. Um, I wasn't really into role playing games, I was more into action games, um, definitely platformers. For some reason, first-person shooters, and I mean, I still... Like, I still have an interest in first-person shooters, but they're a genre of game I refuse to pay a certain price for. No matter how great the first-person shooter is, um... At this... At the time of this recording, Recording Doom Eternal is, I guess, relatively new. But I recently purchased Doom, the 2016 Bethesda version. And I got it on sale for, I want to say, under 20 bucks. It might have been under even significantly less than that, but... I mean, any kind of first-person shooter, even if it's one I really want, like the Doom 2016. 
I just refuse to pay 20 bucks for it. More, more than 20 bucks for it. I might be coerced to go as high as 25, maybe 30, but... That's... very rare. In Doom's defense, it has a lot more interest in me as a first person shooter for no other reason than it doesn't follow the habits of almost every other first person shooter that gets released nowadays where it's the um, Primarily multiplayer, the single player campaign mode is more of an afterthought. I don't do multiplayer. I cancelled my PlayStation. What is it? Plus? And for no other reason than the free games they were offering at either already purchased or at best had a minor interest in. Now that I no longer have that subscription service, the free games that I did get I can no longer play, but you know to say that I'm upset over it will be a lie. Because the truth was the I wasn't playing those games anyway, so... There you go. But yeah, Doom 2016... I mean, I'm... Not even 95% sure, more 85-90% to 90 sure that there is a multiplayer option. But... The main point of the game is, um, the single player campaign. So I don't feel as though I am getting that ripped off purchasing it, even though I only paid like maybe a little more I didn't pay more than 20 I may have even paid less than 10 just saying okay I guess I don't I need that for something else um I honestly wasn't expecting to succeed quite as well as I did here. So what I am going up, I know I need to go, or at least I am under the impression that I need Columbus to sail a ship to the Americas. I was, or I had to catch myself from saying North America. I don't know why I'm assuming this game is going to send me to North America, especially considering it Columbus landed in, what was it, South America or Central? More South America. And for some and the only reason I am pretty sure it was South America is more because I know the history of tobacco than I do the history of Columbus. Um, Columbus found a group of native native islanders off the coast of Venezuela who chew tobacco. Now obviously, I, but what I mean by chew isn't 
dip like Skull, Copenhagen, what most people associate with chewing tobacco. Up here in Canada anyways. Um, I'm talking more as a chew like um, Red Man and Leaf Stoke, well Stokers makes dip as well, but Red Man, Levi Garrett, like to chew you actually grab a huge wad of, put in your cheek and sort of I don't know, nibble or not. And I know he found a group of islanders off the coast of Venezuela who used tobacco for that purpose. Obviously it was not the, it's not near the same tobacco that's offered for usually offered anyways for the market as it is now, but um Yeah, that's the only reason I'm pretty sure it was South America and not necessarily Central. My history teacher who was supposed to teach me that was extremely incompetent, so... Pretty much I had to self-educate myself and I unfortunately am embarrassed to say... Forgot what it was that I learn. So anyways, I'm going to get here. Take care, everybody, and bye.